coal and iron the two basic things which are required for us in order to maintain the industry here especially coal is very required for us and coming to iron the processing of iron requires a lot of hard work because first the iron is got in the pure liquid metal by the process of smelting after the process of melting is done or to do the process of melting we need to have charcoal the charcoal has to be burnt then you burn the iron then you get the shape of the iron or then the iron is heated then you get the smelting process so in order to heat the iron we need charcoal in large amounts and charcoal they we have many negative effects of charcoal because charcoal is in very small small fragile pieces and transportation of charcoal is a very difficult and tough task whereas it doesn't give much high temperatures also and transportation is very difficult during that period and it also produces pure quality of iron with impurities so these are the negative points and in order to get this charcoal also we need the forest we need the wood so we need the forest where the deforestation has been in a larger extent in order they required the wood items so they started to cut the timber trees where deforestation was also in high so these all added the need for the people to think on the alternatives of how to heat the iron then we got the discovery by debris of sharp shire debris of sharp shire these people were the iron masters who father son grandfather son and his son have done their great contribution for us and they have changed the entire outlook of germany sorry the entire outlook of england in respect to the iron issue where later on britain became the only country where it produces more amount of smelting iron than any other part in the world now let us see here what did they do abraham darbis discovered the coke the coke which is a produces very high temperatures in order to heat the iron so coke is produced from coal where coal is being removed sulfur and the impurities then you get coke so this coke made a revolutionary change and the negative impacts of charcoal where you need have a problem with the transport you have very small fragments of charcoal you need to go to the forest and get all these things these all were removed and we were able to produce very easily with the coke and later we have a better development than this by the second darbis who produced the wrought iron which is the pig iron he made it a little bit flexible iron to make according to our shapes this also added a great contribution for us then we have henry cort putting the puddling furnace which heats the iron in a very fast manner and we whichever shape we need we can make it so these all discoveries of this particular iron masters have added for the britain to become a very good iron smelting place where you need not worry about anything because naturally itself they have iron ore they have coal and they also have good transport facilities of water and ports we have many ports which connects to various other corners and the cheapest way of transport is during that period shipping so this all added for the britain and the study of iron made us very clear by this because in 1820 one ton of pig iron if it has to be heated we need 8 tons of coal whereas by 1850 it reduced only to 2 tons of coal and in 1848 when a careful study was made except england no other country produces or have the capability of smelting the iron so fast at very less availability of the coal also see these are the major developments which also made england to stand on the number one position of the industrial revolution cotton spinning and weaving how did the cotton spinning develop in britain let us see here for cotton spinning as we all know the cotton spinning system what they were having has the wool and the flax the linen cloth were the main production of their aspects so in order to produce these they have the political developments of east india company in its colonies like india where they used to hold them and they used to send the inputs for them at very less cost and that would is to be made as a cloth and sent back to the other places and during by the 19th century the situation was in such a way that they need many 10 spinners to supply the material for one weaver and this used to take a lot of time for them and there was a lot of gap between the spinners and the weavers 
because we have only one viewer and it is very difficult for them to manage the things and this was speeded up with the discovery of uh, invention of the machinery and now the changes in the development has happened like this like speeding of the raw cotton thread and then fabric was happened in such a way that now there was no gap between the time of the spinners and the weavers and later on the industry has moved on from homes and the places of their choices to the place of factories where everything was maintained by the factories and finally almost all the raw cotton was imported to england and the final output of the cloth was sent out by 1780s to their cloth fixed finished product was sent to the other marketing places where they can earn huge and huge profits but moving on to the discovery of the steam engine the steam power concept we have the demands for the metals as a demand for the metals like iron coal all the other metals has been increasing day by day the need for the metals obviously we go for mining so the mining has been started continuously but there is a problem in mining is that the floods started to enter into the fields where the mining is getting completely struck and spoiling and swallow them off and destroy the entire set of what they have done so these floods have become problematic for them and we need something alternative for that so with the invention of james watts prime mover which was actually just a machine which is having power he generated a system where he can move the machine with certain amount of power that is called prime mover or engine power where he has given he received a financial support from matthew bolton who has extended his full support unconditionally and made him to do the researches and finally in soho foundry where james watt has started this in birmingham and started to produce by 1780s all the steam engines and by 18th century the steam engines were replacing all the hydraulic power places and 70% of the england steam engines are produced by james watt so james watt's discovery has brought a traditionally a great change in the outlook of the industries and every place machines have been replacing the older patterns and even the hydraulic power has been replaced by the steam power where it has been a drastic change in almost all the fields and every industry started to adopt to the new changes